The first thing you have to understand with regards to trying to come to terms with the conception of the shadow is to understand the idea of persona. And persona is the you that you present when you want people to accept and like you. Often like. Um, let's say that you go to a party and you're trying to impress the people that are there and you're trying to get them to like you. And so you maybe get jabbed out a little bit and you laugh and you know you're you go along with everyone so that they like you and then you go home and you're bitterly resentful about the way that you were put down at this party and th that's going to make all sorts of aggressive i wish i could have said it's going to make all sorts of aggressive and venge vengeful thoughts sort of flash through your imagination well the first part of the problem is that you were too much persona right you sacrificed yourself in some sense at the party so that people would like you and in the second part, you're refusing to admit to the existence of those elements of you that would have actually protected you from doing that. So let's say you go home and you're all bitter and resentful and you have fantasies of revenge. I mean, that reveals to you the shadow part of you that's aggressive. And the thing is, you actually need that because if you would have integrated that more successfully into your personality, when you went to the party, you wouldn't have had, let, you wouldn't have had to let people put you down to get them to like you. You know, instead of having a face like this, which says, I'll take anything that's coming my way, you know, you have a face and a stance that's more determined and assertive. And if you manifest that properly, people aren't going to mess with you to begin with. But, you know, you may have already adopted a morality that says, well, I have to be likable and I shouldn't do anything that causes any conflict and I shouldn't ever, you know, hurt anybody's feelings. And so you're just to present yourself as a punching bag and you think that that makes you a good person, but it doesn't. And there's no integration of the shadow in that situation. So you see that at the end of the movie, you know, when I, I mentioned this, when Simba cr climbs up the rock to take control of it, all the female lionesses bare their teeth and he roars. It's like that aggressiveness is integrated into him. And so resentment is a really good emotion for making contact with the shadow side, because if you're resentful about something, it basically reveals two things. It either means that you're immature and you should stop whining and get on with things. You know, someone's asked, this often happens with adolescents who are asked, say, by their mother to clean up their room. They get all resentful about it. It's like, shut up and clean up your room. You know, it's, it's not that much to ask. Or, so that can be a gateway into the observation of your own immaturity. Or, it's possible that you're resentful because people really have been poking at you too much and taking... And, and taking shot, cheap shots at you and oppressing you. But what that means is that you've got some things to say that you haven't been willing to say or don't know how to say, right? You can't stand up for yourself properly. And in order to do that, you have to grow some teeth and be willing to use them. And again, that's something that might violate your morality because you might say, well, I shouldn't be able to bite people. And the thing is, yes, you should be able to bite people hard. And if you're able to bite them, then generally you don't have to. But they need to know that you can, because otherwise, especially people who are badly socialized, they'll just keep encroaching on you and encroaching on you and encroaching on you and encroaching on you until you, you put up a wall. Like s someone who's really well put together won't do that, you know, because they're sophisticated. But if you run into people who only have boundaries because other people impose them on them and you won't do it, you're going to be the bullied one in the office, for example. You're not going to get a raise. People aren't going to credit you with your own work. Other people are going to take credit for it. You know, and you're going to go home angry because you're doing your best and you're trying to get along with everyone and nothing ever goes your way. Well, it's because you're a pushover. And you think that's good because you confuse harmlessness with, with, with morality. It's, it's, a bad, it's not right. Just because you can't do any damage doesn't mean you're moral. It just means you're, you don't have the capability for mayhem. And that makes you a pushover. I mean, the Jungian stuff is very, very dark, you know. It's very dark. Because his notion of what constitutes a moral human being is much different from the typical view. He really thinks you get that horrible side of yourself integrated so it's up there where you can use it. Because otherwise, you're, you're dangerous. You can't say no to people, and you'll go along with the crowd. And then if the crowd does something particularly pathological, which it's liable to do, you won't be able to resist it. 
you won't have the strength of character. And so then you'll fall prey to, to crowd pathology. And it'll be because you're too agreeable with a, you know, with a shadow resentful side that the crowd and its murderous intent is going to act out. <laughs>